The following announcement has been paid for by the other Sue them. I should have. No, you, you, hit them, you hit them up on Twitter and they'll do something about it. I swear to God. Me? I did that, yeah. I went to a Wendy's and there was like fucking flies and shit mm. and the bathroom was a piece of shit. Bruh. So I was like, what the hell's going on here, blah, blah. And then Wendy's like, let us know which one. <laughs> <laughs> they know. They know. They know. had the exact <laughs> voice, too. Let us know which one. They don't play. Nah, bruh. So I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't got that type of life. My barber. Works at Wendy's? No. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, cuz. I got you. I just got to finish making this motherfucking sandwich, cuz. I got to edge you up. Well, Not for the croutons on the I'm salad. I'm going to at you. Give me that spatula. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. You finna kill him. You finna kill him. Nah, he got the little ring doorbell, so he can see when people uh come to the house. And Amazon, they just straight. Sweet. <laughs> that package said, dude. I said, nope. He hit Amazon up on Twitter. They was like, what happened? They ain't trying to tell you nothing. Nope. Tell you what, they need to be broken the sandwich. Right. <laughs> 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 oh, shit. If I see one of the fine-ass shoes in my yard, they're going to be crazy. Last time I went to Wendy's, I threw hands. Damn, Rex, what the hell happened? Yeah, right. All that nigga stuff up. Autocrastic was at Wendy's last night. and the You only got no strawberry frosting. <laughs> 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 I don't get no damn strawberry frosty. <laughs> he had the reverb on the head. God damn, I can open the door. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Uh, <laughs> you got someone fired at Taco Bell because they kept messing up your order? Yeah, I'll lose my shit. Man, you better fire this motherfucker. Bill Taco, that's is that from Taco Bell? I don't know Taco Bell. Yeah, I know it's good. <laughs> though, I know. You ever get Taco Bell. <laughs> you know ain't open straight up. <laughs> Fuck it, man. I was gonna do an unboxing, but let's just do it live now, I guess. Uh, Fuck it. You got the outfit on. Uh, uh, I do got. I do got the outfit on. Damn. Damn. You, yeah. What's that? They treat that motherfucker like old Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> 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 what happened? You oh. might gotta rewind this. What the hell is happening, bro? I, I canceled my prime so quick. Oh shit! I was wondering why my uh, every time I got a game, the disc was never in the little fold part. Mm-hmm. It was just sliding around. He took the helmet off. He had that little moment like, man, fuck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I don't know if you guys have seen it. I know what this is. I ain't getting this new game. Fuck this. Fuck Damn. this helmet. Look at it. It got all fake, so I found it maybe from some store. And then he just walked off like, oh, no, well, it's over there. Okay. Yeah, Everybody's going to go to this boss. Hey, fuck everybody in there. You I know, I'm, <laughs> I'm not even going to front. Like, I work at the airport. We just talk this yeah, shit around. Yeah, we just talk this shit around. I'm going to fuck with that. I'm just letting you know. So if you travel, have a really good fucking bag because this shit's going to get tossed. That's why my little they shit, don't they, they, they don't even go down no more. <laughs> like, well, yeah, this shit sucks. Front so long. Huh, huh, fuck it. Why am I dressed up like Seth from King of Fighters? Because mm. this is me on a daily basis. You don't fuck like I know me on the straight fire. You don't fuck like the one of the one series of Pokemon. <laughs> oh, shit. Right? I got a gambling problem. Straight up with this shit. Ain't even, uh, this ain't goldfish. <laughs> I bet you ain't got no fours over there. I got a real bad gambling problem. Anyways. So I'm going to unbox this motherfucker and see what it's all about. But I'm going to try to not mess with the box because I just like it. Mm. And maybe I'll put it back in there. But this is the mini. And perhaps I can get this thing plugged up and we can play some of it. Damn. Here's an adapter. 
Wanna get on the dice rack? I don't know. Uh, where is my D twenty? Oh it's over there. He's rolling a seventy. The one in, uh Yeah, he's rollin'. I rolled a sixty. That's right. He's risen. Is it my turn? Yeah, your turn. Oh okay, what the heck is Thomas gonna do? [laughs] Watcha gonna do? Uh, watcha gonna do? Drive. [noise] Did I mention that? DM? [laughs] Well, yeah, he didn't really do much. Sorry, I dunno. [laughs] Chancey doesn't have wheat. And Thomas has one shots. And then [noise] Uh, do you wanna do that? Yeah, I'm gonna do that. Actually I'm gonna do this. Um yeah, I'm gonna do it. Actually, yeah, I'm gonna do it. Should I do it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, there's a wheat. Yeah, it's right there. Right there. Thanks. [noise] And then I get a card. Okay. Fuck. [laughs] [laughs] Go, Megan. You can't say two. Shh. [laughs] I thought you said two of these. [laughs] No 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 no, I just heard two of them. [laughs] Oh. But Thomas actually only had one shot. Did you really? Yeah. Damn it. He didn't have that much. I wanna do that. [noise] Yeah, he's too I'm gonna do it too. Yeah, you're right. I'm not gonna pick up two cards until I actually Well, that's not gonna work. Um d- because two That's not really gonna work either. That's no- They're gonna have to put down a road somewhere. Yeah. No, yeah, you're right. Um [noise] Yeah. [noise] So there's that. Um [noise] That's fine. Whatever. Um, okay. [noise] Which one do you want? Do you want this one? Yeah, just take the one that I'm using. Oh, so the first one is the one that has the gold. Let's keep that one. Yeah, just keep that one. Okay. [noise] That one. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. Right. There. Yeah, a little bit of this, little bit of this. Wait what? Not that one. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's perfect. How much is that one again? [noise] That one's a tenth of a tenth. Rick, how much is this one? Oh, maybe we should do this. Woah, what's with the tens? Um, yeah, we can make the tens a tenth. That's the tenth. Yeah. [noise] Okay. Um, hand me out a card. I Okay, hand out a card. I just need to put it down. Hand me out a card. Just gonna take it from Megan's hand. Oh, actually I can't keep this one. Aw, shoot. Oh, that means Josh can't have that. What the heck? Why would you do that? [laughs] [laughs] Wait, what? Why would you do that? [noise] Cuz he needs the money. Yeah, cuz I have no money. Oh. Um, can you give me something to drink? Yeah, I have tea. Yeah, sure. Green tea in the back there. Green tea. Cold green tea. Have you tried kombucha? I I have, yes. I'm not a Kombucha person. Oh, really? Yeah, I have tea. Is it carbonated or is it We'll see. I'm gonna drink it. Ooh, shit. [laughs] What? I dunno how that thing tastes. [noise] Uh, yeah, let's try it. Yeah. Ooh, shit. [noise] It's ok- it's kinda, yeah. Is it carbonated or is it We'll see. I'm gonna see if I can find it. [noise] You try you try it yet, or What? No, I didn't try it yet. We should look under the micawave. I hear there might be some uh knives here. Like, over here. Okay. Yeah. [noise] Oh, where is she? Like a whole roll of them. Is there some? Yeah, grab grab a bunch of those. [noise] That's more Or [noise] You know why It's not bad. It's not bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where did you get this? Ooh, just this. [noise] Uh, yeah. Nikki got me one. Nikki got you one? Yeah. [noise] That's awesome. Nikki, you do the most work. Yeah. [noise] She's getting paid. Good job, Nikki. I I think that's enough pepperoni. I think so, too. Or did y- all of this fall under your thing? [laughs] No no no, that was like, that was half Megan's. What? [laughs] Like, each of us got fifty cents. [laughs] Oh, that's a lot. [laughs] Not bad. All right, so. Um, we can put that away? [inaudible 0:29:38.62] No, no, it's fine. I think we have too many letters. This kinda looks like a one person job. Should I reply, "What?" Alvin? Unless we like, put like, more like, water Get get like a paper towel or something. Wait Yeah, do you have a paper towel? [inaudible 0:29:54.08] Oh, I should've gotten a paper towel. Or something. Yeah, yeah, right? I should've bought a paper towel. [laughs] All right, you guys take one. Yeah, you do. Sweet. Okay, Megan. You do? Yep. Oh, no. Ian got his. Yeah, I got mine. But I don't know where Ian got it. Oh, I'm scared. Oh, it's over in the living room. [laughs] All right, so that's there; that's almost done. And this is all shot 
the high school, um, well, the skit. It wasn't like really high school. People thought it was for high school, but no, it was uh, the high school skit. Like um, we were doing a project to see if um, he could survive in the hood or something <laughs> with his Jordans on or something. It was something stupid that I actually. Gotcha. Oh, there you go. Now I got the freaking sound. Uh, it was something stupid that I actually was inspired from um, Mad TV. It was actually a Mad TV skit that inspired me to do that skit. Really? Yeah. Yeah, and I remember, and it was uh, uh, Stephanie Weir. You can walk by. It's okay. You just... <laughs> Sorry, my, my fiance was scared to walk by. Uh, oh, it was uh, Stephanie Weir, and I forgot who else was in the skit, but yeah, it was basically almost the same thing. She was like some really geeky girl, and she held the camera and she was like, this is an experiment for whatever's class, blah, blah, blah. And I found it really, really funny. And I think one day, I don't know if we just did it on a whim when mostly that's how we did things was on a whim. Mm -hmm. Or if we were filming something and then did that while filming it. But I think it was just like, I think it was just on a whim. Let's just go to the back of the school because I, I lived, I used to live across the street from my elementary school. Uh, shout out to Pablo Casals Elementary School. He's still there, and I hope you're teaching them kids well and uh, leading them into great things in the future. But it's Chicago Public School, so we don't know what's going to happen. Anyway, <laughs> so uh, we went to the back of that school, and that's where usually where we record a lot of stuff. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Well, yeah, from yeah, my my experience, that's where we had first discovered you guys. And, I mean, fast forward, I'm going to be skipping because it's, it's been, like, years. How you doing, Dana? It's been like so many years. Like I just told y'all, middle school. I'm about to be thirty, so that should just tell y'all exactly how it's long crazy. ago this was. It's crazy how how long I've known you and all these other cats, uh, all the cyber goons, because y'all were very. We were all very young, you know. But for me, I already felt like I was old, so everybody felt like they were really, uh, you know, kids. And then as we grew up, I. It's still hard to imagine that. We grew up together, and you guys are, like, around my age right now, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, again, just to be real with y'all again, they started, uh, well, he can explain it better than I did, but, um, better than I can, but now I started shooting a short film called Officium, and if y'all don't know, that is where Knights of Paradise came from, so if y'all have ever seen me put up Knights of Paradise on the stream when I'm doing, like, get, uh, be right back or anything like that. That's where that came from. I initially asked him, like, could we do a spinoff of that? And that's how Knights of Paradise was born. And me and No Tomatoes, we went out and we filmed that. So that's, again, how well, I was saying in the beginning. What he won't, what you, he won't tell you was that I actually gave him a cease and desist. And I was going <laughs> to uh, put a lawsuit and everything. But uh, it, was, it was too much money for the lawyer. So I said, fuck it, let him do what he want to do. That's exactly what happened. And that's why I flew out to Chicago later. Just, hey, Dez with the raid. Thank you. Uh, alerts were supposed to be off, but I guess they still working. So fuck oh, it. Oh, shit. Thank you for the raid. Thank yo. you, my guy. Thank you. I hope you had a good stream. Everything was straight. Uh, thank you again for the raid. Welcome, Raiders. Um, for the guys that are just coming through, we are interviewing the great Nas. Nostradamus of My Way Entertainment. I should have had some logos and everything put up here, but I was so pressed for time today. But, um, yeah, so we, that's how we started doing short films and everything. And it was times in my life where I was going through like some very, very depressing shit. And if it wasn't for these guys videos, like I honestly, it, yeah, they was there to make me laugh and everything. So that's why I've always kind of looked up to them as brothers because it's like, they was there for me in ways that like, they don't even really know. And I, not even just Nas, you know, the whole gang, Scoob, LP, you know, Randy, everybody that, that, that was Carol and everybody back then, like Sonny, like it goes back, back, back. And then what ended up happening was they started doing live streams and I started going to those. But before we get to that, would you like to tell us, sir, how you met up with, with the gang and, you know, how you guys started shooting films and skits and things like that? Well, it's, it's it all started when we were like kids, really. Once I moved to that block, I met Scooby and we became best friends. And around the same time, that's when I met Randy. So it was us three. 
you know, BFFs. And we did a lot of stuff. We played with toys outside. We freaking wrestled outside. Well, not wrestled, but we did a lot of crazy stuff. We hanged out. We played games, all that stuff. Uh, I met Tony in high school. But, and everything started, like, after high school. But the whole, like, yearning to film and whatnot started when I was a kid because, you know, I grew up, grew up watching movies and all this stuff, and I was, like, very fascinated by that. I became a, a cinephile as a young child, and I really wanted to go into that field and make, um, well, first was to be, like, some kind of star in it, you know, be my own you know, action stuff. I grew up loving, like, Marty McFly and Back to the Future and wanted to be as cool as him and blah, blah, blah. When I was a kid, my brother got me my first camcorder, and I used to make little short movies with my action figures. Um, and and it just grew on from there. So the evolution of that going on through high school, there was this uh, English class. And shout out to Miss Mohammed. I mean, she'll never see this probably, but um, I thank God for having her come into my path because she was technically the catalyst was like, he said, okay, we're going to do something fun this year where we're going to take whatever story we read and you're going to um, turn it into a short film. And then we'll have like this uh, festival at the end of the year and uh, we'll give out awards. And of course, I was like, yo, let's go. Uh, I gathered my people and the first people, of course, that's where I met Sony and all that stuff. He was in the classmate, so he was part of my crew and whatever. And the first two movies or two short films we did was actually directed by me and Sony. We took like, we shared in that. And over the next, it was like three years of that. So over those three years of high school, that's where we did these videos. And I learned like a craft. I mean, the first short videos I've done, I edited through VCRs, you know, VCR, VCR edit. I wasn't even like this is before there was even a software I could use. And then big ups to Ms. Mohammed once again. She gave me my first editing software. And that's when I first started using it. And I've been hardcore, like, like, I don't know what I'm, the word I'm looking for, but this is like the only editing software. Back then it was called like uh, Sound Foundry or something like that. But it's basically Sony Vegas. Like, that was the only software I used throughout all these years. I tried others and, you know, I never was easy to adapt, even Adobe Premiere, but it's just Sony Vegas was the only thing I used since then because of this woman. She was like a second mother to me and she opened the door for that. And that's where I met Sony. And then sure enough, after, I mean, we blew away in those, in those, uh, and those assignments because we kept winning like best picture and director and cinematography and all that stuff. And I, I mean, there was other crews that were really mad at us <laughs> <laughs> because the first year, man, we blew it away with my interpretation of Beowulf, which I'm pretty sure I've shown like on stream or whatever. I don't know if you, you ever seen it, but, um, I mean, the, the one I show is me, uh, the re-edit of it when I finally put it into the computer. But the first edit was like VCR to VCR. And a lot of people were mad because they were like, what? It's just a bunch of fighting, which it was. But it still was like, you know, the way we did it was very, very well done for that time. And we just dominated the field and kept winning like all the awards. So then next year, people were trying to like one up. But then at that time, I had like video editing. So then dominated again. And, uh, but you know how you said like, oh, you know, these guys inspired me. I mm. feel like at that time we inspired them as well to up their game because they did up their game. These other, these other teams, they really made like better videos the following years. And that was just the catalyst. I'm saying that I know this is a long story and I'm not making it short anytime soon, but it's just, that's how it started. It was from there and it grew out. Once I got out of high school, I went to Columbia College to study film and video. Wasn't feeling it. Was going through a lot of stuff at that time period too, like towards the second year, because they don't start you off like right away doing what you want to do. And I just wanted to jump into it. No, you had to get some prerequisites out of the way and blah, blah, blah. It's like, that's not why I came here. I wanted to just do film and video and then you meet all these other people and they're too hipster and this and that and they want to be the next david lynch or this and that and i was just like look i love big movies and i want to be 
like Robert Rodriguez. You know, that's who I wanted to be. And nobody was on my same level. And you start losing like you start losing that passion for it. And 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 I was dealing with that and also the passing of my father. It was like his final during my second year of college, it was like his final year. And then after he passed away, I just had no love because everything I did was like kind of for him, not really for him, but everything I did was, you know, supported by him and kind of for him. So when that happened, my whole life changed. I just had no desire in the school. Things were getting too expensive. I had this more, I had more of a, of a goal of like being there for my mom and, and helping her out and shit like that. And that was not an easy task. That took a while until I could actually like do something but during that time period of being really low and and a bum that's when the viral videos were created because i had all this time in the world and as you said like my videos got you through stuff my videos got me through everything especially starting with my father's like like final weeks you know because i was actually making some videos in the backyard with my family and friends while they were there just to get me through all of this and till this day is still something like if it's helping you get through things imagine what it's doing for me it helped me to get through everything yeah man well you know definitely condolences and everything to your to your father like i never even knew that story but um yeah man like it's kind of like the gift that kind of keeps on giving you know like he gave you that motivation and everything to want to do stuff and then like it got y'all in such a like Y'all literally had the internet. Like, back then, y'all were the internet. Y'all were the, the beginning of the YouTube, back when nobody was really on YouTube or doing skits and everything. Everybody was talking about y'all and the stuff that y'all was doing. And it was just, it was crazy. And that's what I said, when y'all started doing live streams and things that we could finally, like, interact, it was like, yo, we get to talk, like, at least for me, I was like, I get to talk to one of my heroes. Like, this man has got me through so much, just the whole group in general, like, whether it was the Ask My Ways or, you know, like I said, the skits, the, the game editions, all of that type stuff. And funny enough, we was talking about this, you know, before we even, like, went live. But that's when I would see Trav and Manny and D-Black and just, like, everybody else. Like, we've known each other for so long and we've only just started talking, like, within the past two to three years. And it's crazy. And it's like, you're the catalyst that literally brought us together. It was like, how does that make you feel, like, knowing that, like, you're literally, like, the root that even started this? It's surreal to this day. Many people here have met each other and become very, very close friends and family and even began relationships. It's just because of our videos. And I, it's still surreal. Everything that happened over, you know, since it started in 2006 is all surreal to me. Um, but I'm very proud of it. You know, I could bring these people together because I always felt like me and the guys, when when we revealed ourselves, and I'm not talking about like in the juggernaut bitch kind of way, but when we revealed ourselves through my like video blogs and live shows and whatnot, people started seeing like, oh, look, those guys are like me. And those guys are like me and my friends and we can relate and I can see myself hanging with them and and that just brought out all these other people that I feel were, and you know, this was the start of the internet, but I feel like this was the beginning of like people coming out and being more proud of themselves. Cause that's was something that I always wanted to feel like we need to be more proud of ourselves. Look, I was made fun of for like in Star Wars and Power Rangers and all this stuff back in the day. But now that generation, we are that generation. Now we we revel in all that stuff. Like I see you with the Power Ranger helmet back there and all your good Power Ranger shit. You see me with all my background stuff. Well, it's blurry right now. But you see how we like we revel in this. Like yeah, we're geeks and we love it. But we're also freaking like we're also urban and and we're also mature and and I don't know how to explain it. But it's just like people came out of the show and they were more like this is me deal with it you know and and we are we are here and we're the society and and we're just like you and and then we start realizing that we there's other people like us around the world like if we all lived in the same freaking city we would be hanging out you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. we just reached out and we were like across the whole nation and i mean i got to meet you and that was great 
you know, I never thought that would happen. And I just, I, I, I would love to meet everybody else that, that, that I've interacted with or made friends with online and stuff like that. Um, I will say, like you mentioned the Power Rangers helmet and everything. You want to talk about like things in the high school. That was a big thing for me because growing up, my brother was the jock in high school. I was the nerdy kid that loved, you know, Power Rangers, you know, comic books and things like that. Back then, it wasn't as accepted as it is today, which is why the conversation of always, uh, when I go to the movies, I used to go to the movies with some of my friends and it was like, oh, now y'all want to sit here and ask me, oh, who's that pulling up on Iron Man where before if I would have told y'all, y'all would have looked at me like I was crazy. So like that conversation is always like funny to me because now people are way more accepting of it. And now even the people that was quote unquote like too tough for that shit always kitty shit, they got the same type of shit. And like I literally, well, number one, I was too broke to start collecting, but you were one of the main reasons why I even started collecting. Like, a lot of my stuff, like I got my pops and all that other stuff. Again, when we came up there, your room, all, every dude, you pretty much had like everything in there, and it was just like, oh no, 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 don't go blaming me for your collecting obsession now. No, look, I've I've calmed down a whole lot since I've um <laughs> since I've gotten everything I needed, man. But yeah, no, honestly, yeah, you were the reason why, like like you said, it. I want to say like my way during the time when y'all were doing the live chats, it felt like a place where I could belong and like be accepted at the time. Like I said, because a lot of the people around where I lived at weren't really into the stuff that I was into. So I was always kind of just the weird kid. So everything that you're saying is a thousand percent right. And even when we came up there, when me and No Tomatoes came up there, like I even told him when we got back to the hotel because... When we finished filming for the Knights of Paradise and Officium thing, which we never got a chance to finish doing because goddamn COVID came and just destroyed everything that we was working on at the time. But I told him when we got back to the hotel, I'm like, we like he even said it too, like we weren't expecting to for you to invite us like to back to your house. Like at the end of the day, we came up there, we we was we came from Virginia up to Chicago, but it was like you've never actually like met us known us and for you to have like that level of trust and like everything like that to bring us back there and again catalyst because of that stream i met more people on twitch which in turn has me here right now because i wasn't even on twitch like i've had an account since it was just in tv but i wasn't really yeah. like streaming streaming so it wasn't even until i came up there that all of this stuff happened and that's where, again, y'all see the video that uh, has been playing where me and some No Tomatoes went up there. So literally coming up there changed my life. And if it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have met my girl that's in the back either because I met her on Twitch. And that was because of the stuff that branched out after I met you. There you go, y'all. There you go, man. Congratulations. Well, well thank you. Thank <laughs> you, sir. I'm very proud. You see what I tell you? Like I bring people together. That 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 warms my heart. I'm I'm glad that I help you find your significant other because you know we all we all they're out there and we all need to find them and they're the best parts of our lives. Hundred percent agree with that, sir. So yeah, um... you know what's funny about the you coming to my you coming to my place was that I I didn't have that plan either either. I just like. Me and Randy were chilling with you guys, and you guys seem really, really cool. And that's that's something else. Like, y you have to like. I don't bring just anybody over to my spot. Mm -hmm. So, for you to be there does say a lot because we vibed, and and I was like, yeah, these guys are are cool, and 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 trustworthy, and like. We were hanging like we known each other for a while too, mm -hmm. you know, and and that was that was cool. So I, I was more worried about like you know it was my older spot, so that room was small to have four people in there, and then you know I didn't want to be a bothersome to 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 my mother and whatnot, but it all worked out very well. We made it we made it work out, and uh, yeah, I'm glad uh, we had fun. We yeah. definitely have fun. Definitely. Like Tomato said in the chat, like I, I read it to two years. I don't know if you see it, but now it shows so much love to us. Shocked me initially, but I'm thankful for him letting us in his home with memory I won't forget. 
And that's the exact boy, shit. Boy, shout out to Tomatoes, boy. Shout out to Tomatoes, man. You were big as hell, man. I was like, <laughs> damn, this is a giant. <laughs> I was more worried about you, too, because you were you were huge, bro. So it's like you and Randy were almost like the same. And I was like, damn, there's going to be two big motherfuckers in my room. Good luck. Like you said, bro, we, we made it work. And, you know, I'm, again, I'm thankful for, for everything that, that, that came from that and everything. But, um, so I would want to get into next is, like, your streaming and, like, your schedules and stuff that you stream and everything now. Like, how, how did that get sorted? And, like, what do you do now, like, as far as streaming goes for the chat anyway? Well, you know how you said that I was, I, I inspired you to do to do um, streaming and it's funny because again it was a cyber goon that inspired me and um i i also just had an account from justin tv because so it was always here but i never i never did it you know and then since the years of mwe you know we fell out because and i don't want to say we fell out like uh we separate whatever because people feel people sometimes get worried like or think that we're we're not together anymore or friends or stuff like that and that's not the case it's just that we got older you know like mm -hmm. sony's a father and a husband and so is scooby carol's a mother randy's got a job and just you know survived survived cancer so he's doing everything and he's very very well we're all living doing our stuff my my life is mostly at the airport but times are different but we never you know, we never separated. I see LP all the time. I work with him. He's doing very well as well. And and then whenever we could, we'll get together. But I felt streaming was something good that I could still do and easier, you know, because mm. I don't have to really edit much. You do all the editing live. I got to give shout out to you, though, because what you do here is fucking beautiful. Like, I haven't I haven't reached this level yet. So, uh I'm gonna reach out to your production crew and see if I can make all my uh, late night uh, talk shows. But um, it, it's it's just easier, and I have fun because it takes me back to the old days when I did you know live shows or was in tiny chat and and just chilling, hanging out with you guys. And on Twitch here, they're lenient enough, especially if we're under the radar, that we can do anything. I can't stream on YouTube because I always get hit with something. But here's fun, you know. You get to do live game editions and whatnot. And like I tell you, it's it's therapy for me as well. And I just like to have a blast. And watching movies with you guys is the best. As far as scheduling, I have no schedule. I try, but it's just, it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? No, it no. is what it is. But it's not a job and I can't do anything. I, I mean, I'd probably, I'd probably be better if I probably better if I did have like a consistent 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 damn I can't even say word <laughs> consistent schedule but I try and sometimes I don't feel like doing it sometimes I do sometimes I just want to hang back and watch a movie or play games and be with with my girl and my friends sometimes I don't you know oh no look I I totally understand that like especially for me like my chat knows like I'm literally working Monday through Friday, and I work during the afternoon all the way through the night, right when everybody's streaming. When I get home, I just end up going to sleep. I like say what's up, and then I just I'm I'm out from there. So now nah, yeah. I totally get uh, the scheduling and and everything like that. Um, Trav had brought this up earlier, so I wanted to bring this up for the people that uh, may not have known. So I'll bring it up again. But um, the Juggernaut bitch and how that kind of like transcended again with you know, the whole internet thing and everything. How was it when you saw that line in the movie and you realized, like, they didn't give you guys, like, no credit? And, like, did y'all ever get any other, like, opportunities? Did anybody ever call y'all for, like, you know, trying to do, like, voiceover work or anything like that for any type of network? No. But there was a lot of attention around that time, and that was, like, it. look, that whole, that whole thing was something that, Technically, should have never happened. Let's face it, you know. And that year was the Juggernaut bitch and snakes on a plane, and these two things just like blew up the internet. You had my you had my video with that one phrase, and you had uh, a, a freaking meme of um of the snakes on a plane line that got added into the movie, and it was just it was kind of the beginning of how the internet affected 
Hollywood, you know? And when that happened and I saw it on in the movie, it was just unbelievable. Like it was it hit the news. We were getting hit up by Entertainment Weekly, MTV for freaking interviews that that were like on their on their websites, and it was just it was a lot of attention that it was surreal, and, and I was like, damn, you know, this is crazy because we did the video just for fun one night, and and then when YouTube and such was around. I was like, man, let me put this online and see what happens, you know, see what other people see what other people say. And never in a million years did we expect it to blow up like that and and even reach to Hollywood. I mean, to this day is something I could say like a video I did out of just pure boredom and fun ended up in a Hollywood movie. You know, and yeah, we didn't get no credit. I mean, people know who we are. I remember listening to the commentary of that movie during that part and Brett Reiner said like it'll be funny to get these guys to just commentate a whole movie and then people told me about it like crazy and then somehow people got like information on how to contact him and then got it to me and I did and there was like one reply from him but then nothing else ever happened so you know fuck you Brett Reiner in an alternate in an alternate universe uh, we linked up more and, and, and things happened but I think it's just like how we are, you know, if anything, now I look back, I'm glad nothing probably happened because we'll probably have to change and I will have to tone down or something like that. Cause let's face it, like us with Marvel, it probably wouldn't work. Oh shit. The way, the way Disney got the clamps on, on everything in the entertainment industry, bruh. The, yeah. the moment it, y'all would have said one thing that, that wasn't within their guidelines, they'd have goddamn sent the whole Kevin Feige assassin after y'all. Yeah, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't work. We're 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 too crazy. I mean, we we I I, oh, I have to say that we kind of toned down now, I guess, but we we were crazier back then, definitely. Yeah, well, you know, I'm still waiting for I'm still waiting to be canceled for shit we we said. Yeah, like I said, back then, I mean. Times was different, things were different back then, but you know, at, at least, like, it was never in a harmful manner in which y'all did it. Everything was always in, like, good fun. It always came from, like, a comedic tone. It was never, like, intent, like, I'm saying this to just, like, hurt somebody's feelings type shit. So, I don't yeah, think, yeah, yeah I, I think everybody that watched y'all knew that. It might be, like, if somebody goes back now and everything, they would have something to say, but it, I don't ever think it was to that level to where they would have been, like, you know... Oh no, these guys shouldn't have deserved nothing, and it's, that would have been some bullshit. Yeah, I, I, I believe like even then people saw that. I remember when we got interviewed by these uh, two college girls for the magazine, and we, we we spend a day with them and chill with them. And I even asked them, "Why do you like our videos? Because our videos are so so rude and 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 foul and bad, and 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 we're here making you know we're here doing these rape jokes." And and she replied with, "No, it's 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 funny. We get it because of the nature of how it looks, you know. Mm-hmm. It's the nature of 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 how the video looked, and you guys were just given this. You guys were representing that, you know. These these guy these big guys all in tights surrounding this one woman all, you know." freaking tied up in tights and stuff like that. But it was never in a very crazy manner. It was just making fun of the material itself and subconsciously, you know, doing so. Mm-hmm. So, um, question, because I, I remember seeing pictures and everything about uh, conventions and stuff that y'all were going to. How was that like to, like, I think I went to Boston for one of them, if I remember correctly, but, like, going to yeah. conventions and stuff like that. Yeah, Randy and I were invited to a convention in Boston called RafaCon, RafaCon Two, I think, and it was just for a weekend, and that that blew that blew my mind because they were like, "Hey, we want you guys to be here, and it's all paid." And of course, I'm not gonna say mm. no to that. Hell no. So, <laughs> yeah, it was it was all paid, and we went, and it was great. We had fun. It was crazy because, like, once again, it was the most the not the weirdest theme, but it was just 
because I can I can expect that our audience are you know uh, urban and 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 from the city and stuff like that and and people of color. But when like some white woman will walk up to us and she looked like she was from the suburbs and say like i love your videos i show my mom i have her saying the juggernaut bitch all the time and it's fucking annoying me and i was like what like you know that is crazy that it reached out to that other people like that and i guess it's kind of like how hip-hop reaches out to the uh to the suburban market um probably even more than than the, than the city market and it's just not the not the audience that I expected, and it's also cool to see that. Like, hey, you find that funny? That's good because you have a good sense of humor. You don't take anything too crazy, and and you guys are actually having a laugh out of it. And I like to see that. Uh, so that was fun over there. I, I if I could do it, I mean, I guess because over there I could have done a lot of connections and whatnot. We had it was us, the the Chad Vader guys, and and some other like internet famous people at that time that, that were viral and they had they had a party one night but we didn't go to it because i was in boston and it was the first time that i could like hang out with my sister that's in boston mm -hmm. so that's what we did and we had a good time we had a great time over there but um yeah we got invited to that one here locally was probably our first one called um the reactor which is not around anymore sadly but it was a small anime convention and we had a lot of fun there too it was it was cool. I, I don't know to to go and meet people. And the best part about it was that I wanted to make it a cool experience for them. Mm -hmm. um, like the the people who joined the panel, or whatever. So I would you know have like okay guys, let's do something to premiere there. And nothing beats like I'm. I love putting. Sorry, I love putting any video out there, and then seeing the comments. But nothing beats a live reaction. So when we made a a a, viral, a a video, I think it was viral disease. I think it was viral disease too, maybe, maybe I'm not sure, but it sounds right. I think that's what we premiered, and we showed it, and to see the reaction of people there laughing and having a great time, dude, nothing beats that, and that was that was great, and 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 it was just good to just hang out with these people and just have conversations with them because. When people just bump into me, like if I'm just going to a convention period and people bump into me and they're like, are you Nostradamus? First of all, I, I fuck with them. I'll be like, no. And then they look at me like, oh shit. Like, no, nah, I'm just kidding. I am him. <laughs> and then there's been like, I remember there was one girl and she started crying and me and the guys are like, no, no, hey, it's all cool. It's all cool. Look, I'm nobody. This is like, you know, you don't have to cry or anything. Like, come over here, bring your friends. Let's take a picture. You know, you don't have to, that just feels so real you know because we're just guys mm -hmm. you know we don't we're not we're not fucking rich and famous or anything like that we're just guys and stuff so i love to meet the fans i love to see you, and it's still surreal to like even hear you saying like hey you guys inspire me and blah blah and it's like that's great i love to inspire and i'm glad but you guys are also inspiring me and i i, I can't i don't i don't know how to deal with like a moment that was that that was like you know as if i was like michael jackson in the in the in the jackson five or something it's <laughs> like whoa we're, we're 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 just normal people but yeah and and especially the weirdest shit though is when people even hire know our stuff so you got like freaking xavier woods and them like uh mm -hmm. ref in my way entertainment i met other wrestlers who were i met a wrestler ethan page who's an aew now but back then he was just doing the independent circuit i met him and you can see this on his video blogs from back then i met him and i told him i did the juggernaut bitch and he fucking geeked out and i'm like whoa that's crazy you know this it's it's immense the range that this one video reached out and and who knows of it and there's there's many who don't but I'm proud of the range I met, especially when it hit the wrestling world. That's pretty damn fucking cool because, you know, I love the wrestling world. Mm -hmm. Oh, shit. Like, and it's funny, too. Like, you mentioned, like, you know, people coming up to you and everything like that. Like, that was one of the things that I really fucked with y'all about was even though, like, y'all had that stint of where, like, everybody knows y'all material for the most part. Like, y'all never were like, oh, I'm the motherfuckers that made, oh, I'm the drug and that bitch. Don't talk to me. Like, you got to be on some certain type of level. Because I've run into people who are nowhere near, like, the level that y'all ever, like, access, And they already got that mentality. And that shit is disgusting. 
So, like, I was really excited, like, when we did come up to Chicago, like, I said, y'all was, like, the dopest people ever. So, it was, like, this is great because it's, like, again, I looked up to y'all, like, y'all was my heroes when I was back in middle school. And you know how they, the saying goes, never meet your heroes. And it was, like, nah, fuck that. Like, these motherfuckers is awesome. Y'all should, it, it, I would advise it. it. And that was one thing that I took away from that situation was, you know, like I said, that y'all were still down to earth. Y'all didn't, like, get big-headed or pig-headed about it. So I was I was definitely like happy about that. Did it ever get to a point though where motherfuckers was asking y'all to do shit and y'all just got like tired of motherfuckers just like yo okay I'm just trying to get this sandwich right now, bro. Like <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> because that's exactly what I've been. That's exactly what I started thinking when you mentioned all this, man. I'm telling you, there's there's a group of probably like three or four white guys that think we're assholes. Because we gave them an attitude. It's literally just me and Randy trying to go to the freaking like restaurant in the hotel mm-hmm. to get a sandwich. I think like a burger <laughs> or whatever. We're really hungry. And these guys are like, "Yo, it's the it's a freaking juggernaut, bitch, guys!" And they're like, "Say it!" And we're like, "No, we're not gonna come on, say it!" They're like, "No, dude, we're not gonna say it right now." And they was like, "Oh, you're assholes!" And we're like, "We don't give a fuck." <laughs> <laughs> like, how are you gonna come up to it? It's like me going up to. I don't know, man. Some celebrity would be like, hey, say the line. Like, no, man. You don't do that. If they came up to us like really, like whatever, yo, what's up, Ava, whatever, it would have been cool. But mm. it's just they came up to us and they're just like forcing it. Say it. Don't do that. Yeah, that, that was mm. that was kind of dick of them. See, yeah, look, with, I've never even been in them situations, but it's like I've, I've, for me, it's it's just etiquette with the whole. You know, like, if it's a celebrity in the room, no, like, I don't understand. Maybe it's just me. Like, I'm not the person that runs over to people. Like, I might dap you, hey, what's up, man, or whatever, and, and keep it pushing. But I'm not, oh, my God, you're, that would have been crazy. I might internally do that, but I'm not going to sit there and just go go crazy about it. So I always thought that was, like, weird when people would, like, come up to you and, like, like tell you, saying, say the line. That's some wild shit to say to somebody. Like, what type of shit is that? I mean, I could, I could get it. I get it too. You know, you're like starstruck and you're really fanboy and whatnot. Look, mm-hmm. I had a, I had a really big fanboy moment when I first saw CM Punk and he was just biking and I'm just talking to a friend and I see him bike by and I was like, uh, the CM Punk and he, like <laughs> and he looked back and I just waved at him and he waved and he was like, the fuck? And they kept biking and then I felt like shit. I was like, damn it. But it's like, I really marked out you know i saw my fuck my fucking hero mm-hmm. and like in person just go by and shit i got to see him again at a at a comic book store and at that time i like walked him and i was more like nicer and i was like hey man no disrespect or anything like that i just wanted to be like you know you're i'm a big fan and i love what you do and blah blah, mm-hmm. blah and keep doing he was like yeah, no problem blah, blah. Yeah, look, I know how you get down with CM Punk, especially with him being a native and everything. So, I, I, I mean, I know that, but yeah, like I, I, like I said, I definitely appreciated just like I said the hospitality that y'all y'all gave me and him, because like I said, y'all could just film the stuff and be like, all right, bitches, and just left, and then we would have <laughs> just <laughs> went back to the hotel, and everything would have just been that. But like, no, and I tell people all the time too, it's like. Chicago was fucking beautiful and I hate that it gets such a bad rap that it does because it's a fucking beautiful place and I I still argue to this day and I'm from New York that deep dish pizza you told us to get from I'm going to I'm going to butcher the name Gio Gio Cano's I think it was something like that Giordano's Th- there we go that fucking pizza I'm no disrespect to any Chicago listen the way I went, to, we went to Harold's and like all the food in Chicago was fucking great. Like, I don't understand why that place gets such a bad rap. Chicago was fucking beautiful. Her- Harold's was good. That Italian beef sandwich we got, bruh, I don't understand. Like, that shit is crazy. This this is the city of foods, boy. Like, there's foods here like crazy. And you can have a ball. And there's like millions of places I haven't been to yet. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, this is this is one city that you can find good shit to eat. But it's not even like the 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 stuff with the eat. Like even when you took us into the uh, the one shop that had like all of the um the figures and the comic books and shit like that. Like where I stay, those come few and far between. He was like, oh yeah, it's up the squares, another one up the block, everything. We barely even have shit like that. So me, I'm just like, fuck, man. Like this place is fucking great. 
And it was like, yeah, like you, you hear all that stuff on the news. Oh, Chicago, this Chicago, and it's like, man, I it really sucks. Like if somebody got scared off from going to Chicago simply because of the shit that they see on the news, because the shit is beautiful. Yeah, that's that's you know I hate the rep too. I mean, I'll, I'm from Chicago and I'll joke about it, but it's not that bad. You just you come here and you do you, and it's fine. And I mean, any <sighs> crime, violence, just everywhere. You know? Yeah, that's I'm not talking about like in Chicago. It's just like there's anywhere you anywhere you go, something happens. But over here is not. I'm not like going outside and running for my life and shit like that everything mm. is everything is good and gravy you just know where to go don't go into anywhere that it's like the, the higher percentage of something going down but everything is fine here it's a great city there's a whole bunch of stuff to do and um i haven't been to a jazz club though i see uh you know mentioning the one hit of a jazz club i haven't been to a jazz club which is funny because when i was a kid we lived next door to a jazz club that I found out is like historical spot. I think it's still there, but never hit up a jazz club. Oh, look, it might be something, you know, when whenever she do get down there, everybody just have a, a, a big parlay and just go. That sounds like something fun to do. Because um, I'm going to call it the Sears Tower because that's just what's ingrained in my brain. I know exactly. they changed the name. That's but... exactly what it is. <laughs> Fuck the Willis Towers. Who the hell came up with that idea? I have no clue. But me and No Tomatoes, we went there. I think a day or two after we left from y'all, we went there. We went um to the to the stadium. The, um, I was about to say the Allstate. Is it Allstate? Um, it's not Allstate. I'm forgetting the stadium is, name. I'm there is blanking. The Allstate Arena, but there we go. Yeah, was, yeah. We went there. Like we seen the Jordan statue. Like everything was was fucking. No, that's that's the United Center. There we go. There we go. I don't yeah, know why United where Center. I got much, Allstate from. Much much better than the Allstate Arena. <laughs> yeah, United we Center. look. It was it was a beautiful place. Like I said, like especially downtown Chicago and everything. We seen the Benihanas. We didn't get a chance to go, but I said next time we come here, we gotta go to that Benihanas down there. Hey man, I I haven't even been to Benihana so. L- listen. I've never been to Benihana. <laughs> I'm I sorry, y'all. Lived, right? I don't know I if barely, y'all heard that. Speaking of the speaking of the Sears Tower, like I barely went to the Sears Tower last year, and I've been here all my life. Yeah, we we went up to the uh, glove. Stop messing up. And listen, I'm sorry, bro. I look. No tomatoes. If y'all don't know in the chat, he is the biggest Bulls fan that will ever ever exist in life. So like, I know that was a moment for him and everything, but. It was fucked up because when we was in there, we was in the um, the Witcham College store to get souvenirs and everything, and it was like, "Oh, you want to go see the Jordan statue?" And then we went, and then it was like, "Oh, motherfuckers, we closed, so we couldn't even go back and like buy shit. We got fucked." But um, <laughs> yeah, man, it was it was it was great being out there. And like I said, I've been wanting to come back, even like if it was not the film, to just like chilling and, and enjoy because of uh how great the city was and everything like that, man. So. One of these days, um, we definitely going to plan another trip back out there. I don't know if it'll just be me and No Tomatoes or something. I know that uh, when we did come up there, you went to the uh, the Underground Circuit, I believe, for the wrestling. That would be dope to go to because keep it a buck with you. Last time I went to a wrestling arena, Randy Savage was, was uh, main event. And it was, uh, was this WCW? It might have been WCW, and they came to the Norfolk Scope here in Virginia. So that should tell you how long ago I've been to a wrestling match because Randy Savage was still alive. Damn, man. We actually, damn, that was crazy because it was around that freelance time. Actually, there was a freelance show last night, and we went to it, and it was freaking fantastic. That's the kind of stuff like, yeah, it would be great if you came around that time period to go to that because that's, that's smaller, more intimate, and um, it's just fun. It's just fucking fun. Well, yeah, anybody, um, I definitely got to put your Twitter and, and all that stuff in the chat. But anybody, if y'all follow him, and like I said, for, for the rep that you think Chicago gets and how they portray it, you follow Nas, you, this motherfucker, he, and, and pictures at the wrestling events, er, he's everywhere. And it's like the greatest shit ever to see because he's just out there just doing whatever the fuck, having fun. And like, like I said, I, he's unapologetically himself. And that is like, again, one of the things like I always looked up to you as a not only as a creator but as a man himself so again thank you for that uh thank you i mean i that's something i always i always wanted to bring out the inner child and inner inner geek of people and and i realized that i've done that like over the years 
all my life probably, especially mm-hmm. when I'm at work and I'm there's this one guy who works with us and he used to be like, you know, he used to act like real cool and like a fuck boy and everything like that. And then we got to know him and, and we just brought out this inner geek. Now this guy is over here talking to us about Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh and all this other stuff and collecting action figures and whatnot. And it's like, yeah, you see, be that, you know, that you're, you're that inside. Don't be afraid to show that. Just be that. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with liking this stuff and shit like that. Yeah, man. Like, again, is Like I said, I was in some dark times and everything. But, like, again, y'all showed me that when I was younger. Not to uh, beat a dead horse. But I do want to transition <laughs> over into uh, the chat. If y'all would like to ask Nas any questions. I was going to set up the Discord. But um, I don't have that 100% set up right now. So if y'all want to ask in the chat any questions y'all got. I'm sure he would love to answer them. See, look, we, 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 we making uh, uh, Bulls, Bulls fans come together. That's, that's what we do, it, man. Uh, what what they call it? The, four, the fourth quarter stampede? I've never even heard of that, but that sounds I'm really not like, I'm not big on, on, on sports, but my brother is like huge, especially a huge, you know, basketball fan, and he loves the Bulls, and... um. He visited and we watched the Bulls game with him. He was just schooling us and it was a great game. And he said, this is the fourth quarter. This is the fourth quarter stampede. This is when they come back. And sure enough, they came back in the fourth quarter and won the game. So. Is, is that where uh, Nas and Stampede came from? Nas and Stampede came from uh, uh, Trigun. Trigun, gotcha. Nas and Stampede came from Trigun. That was Vash the Stampede. And then I created Nas and Stampede. Now, though, I want to change it to Nas D Stampede, like the actual D because mm. of um, of One Piece, which is also like one of my favorite uh, animes of all time. And there's this thing about like the the D family, which they just have like the D in the middle. So like uh, Monkey D Luffy and Horty gotcha. D Ace and Gold D Roger, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, oh, that'd be funny. And this is funny because this came up like, Last night or the night before, it was like Nas D Stampede. You know, I mix those two animes together and make my name. Huh. Look, I don't know. Again, information that I was never privy to before. So I got to ask um, while we're waiting for people if they're in the chat, if they want to ask any questions. Maybe Will there question ever be right a continuation of Officium? Officium is, man, look. Uh, Scooby keeps joking that he's been in the trunk for like 10 years. <laughs> Cause that thing, that's where we last left them. Was in yep. the trunk. Um, it, it, it's a discussion that comes, it comes by once in a while, especially joking around. But if I had to bring back Officium, I had to, I had to find a way. Cause mm-hmm. it's been too long of a gap. I had to find a way to either like reboot it, remake it, or something. But I would love to. You got look. But I can't make. I would make no promises, but I would love to. I just, I'm just, I'm just waiting for something to like hit me hard that'll make me just go, you know. Gotcha. Well, my homie Dez Clown Zero said, "What would be your biggest advice for content creators?" Uh just do what you love. Oh. That's it. I can't, I can't give anything else than that. It's not like I'm a very, very successful content creator, you know. I'm not here getting millions of views and millions of subscribers and whatnot, and and doing commercials for people and and whatever um but all i ever believe in is just doing you you know just do something do you find yourself don't try to don't try to bite off of anybody else be your own Mm. kind of content be inspired by others yes because i can't even I'm not going to take full credit for, for dubbing videos. I, I, I found that through Fensler dubs, the G.I. Joe PSAs, which, oddly enough, were from people in Chicago, too. That's what I found out. Hmm. So who knew, right? Yeah. Who knew? The, the two biggest, I think, two biggest influence in dubbing videos all came from the same city. So who freaking knew? But, yeah, just just – do your own thing, do something you love, and just keep keep challenging yourself and keep 
keep trying things. Yeah, I yeah. look, I would agree to that. Um, you're going to try things that are not going to work, but for every one thing that does, doesn't work, something else will. That's just me. Yep. I know you didn't ask for my fucking opinion, but there it is. Um, and one okay, table uh, says, my question is, when was your most recent overwhelming feeling of reverence? Uh, explain. Well, while 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 uh and one table explains that no tomato said what's your personal favorite mwe skit or video Ooh, that's hard that's um, a good question i think one video i'm really freaking love and and proud of is the l4d in your ear yes because i tried really hard to make that like shot by shot in sync with the original Flavor in Your Ear remix video. So I feel like I did a really good job and I, I loved how it came out. And it's impressive because all that stuff was done in a really, really small room. Not that one that you were in, but the one before that. Mm -hmm. All done in a really small room with all of us cramped in there. Still made magic. Listen, I still have that, that song on my phone. I still be listening to it. I still be cracking the fuck up. That um, Jello Jello. All of that shit, like, I still, butter. Like, I literally have, like, your whole soundtrack on my damn phone. Like. Yeah. My, my fiance always says, like, why didn't you guys just keep going with that? And I was like, yeah, you're, you're right. We should have kept going with, like, parody videos. Funny. I'm going to give y'all a funny story, chat. <laughs> no Tomatoes, he was on the basketball team in high school, right? And I used to go around singing to Dennis Frogman, I do what I want to. And one time he was on the basketball court and he told me when, like, I think it was like a day or two later, he was like, he was on the court and he started singing it. And he got so pissed off at me because it was like, what are you singing? I do what I want to on the court for at the like most random moment. So like, that's just like I said, it goes back to just how much it was like an influence back in the day. Glove had it as a ringtone. Yeah, I did. I did have it as a ringtone back in the day. That project video is hilarious. Yeah, the pro yeah, we was talking about that earlier, like the the Jordans and everything like that. I'm so grateful I put that edit with L4D and Rush Hour on your Twitter page. Yeah, man, it was um. Which one was that one? L4D and Rush Hour on your Twitter. Page. I think y'all. It was during one of y'all live streams. I think y'all just kind of uh, edited over. It was like a uh, like on the fly type thing that y'all did, if I remember correctly. Man, sometimes I feel bad when people mention something and I'm like, I don't remember anything. Especially like, oh, this in the video. And I'm like, I, what? What video? When did we say that? Who said it? Because sometimes I don't remember. And it's not because we were under any influence, which... Um, you have so much um, content. Yeah, just so much content and whatnot. And everything happened so quickly. Most people believe that we were like either drunk or high when we made those videos. Listen. We were not. It, it made for some fucking top tier comedy. See, I hit a jump shot and said that afterwards instantly wanted to throw hands with glove. I tell you, like I was your influence was like, you want to talk about viral di disease? That shit was crazy, at least for me anyway. But no, like that, um, we used to go around saying not as long as I'm wearing these boots. We the whole Ghostbusters with the jam. Like, like I said, the content back then was crazy. Like we would literally like just sit and laugh at the stupid shit all fucking day. I love it. I freaking love it. That's crazy. I mean, you know, it's funny because um, it's surreal. You know, you guys were out there quoting us. It was surreal. I didn't know we would make such an impact like that. Yeah, man. Look, around the world, I've seen, um, it was one video on YouTube. This was years fucking ago. Um, Lord Zed was still alive, and I know he quoted one of y'all videos. I think uh, one of the cyber goons had asked him to say it. And it was just like, I was like, yo, that's fucking crazy to have the real Lord Zed actually say the quote after that. Like, that was fucking awesome. Yeah, I saw, I saw that one. That was that was great. That that um, I loved it. Uh, RP to that guy. He passed away. I, I don't know when. It was a couple of, in, the, in the recent years he passed away. But yeah, it's funny, though, because he wouldn't say, you know, he, he said it properly. He wouldn't yeah, he say said it like how it was said. Because Instead of bitches. Wanna, yeah, he wouldn't. He didn't want to say bitches or whatever, but it was still freaking great. Hey, my my highlight and my highlight through all this was when I met um, Austin St. John and mm -hmm. I got him to do the morphine saying Jose Cazeco. <laughs> like that was freaking fantastic. And he got all my love and respect for that, you know, because I just told him, I was like, hey, I just want to ask a favor, you know, can I record you 
morphing, but instead you say Jose Cazeco because uh, trust me, a lot of people is gonna love this and it's gonna be a big thing. And he was like, oh yeah, for sure. And I was like, sweet. I go ahead, it's like, and then he said it. The, the video's out there, I think it's, in, it's still on my, in my, in the YouTube. But it was great, you know, it was like, holy snap, like full circle, I got this guy to say it. And he was like the only one I could really get to say something because I can't get the other Rangers to say the other stuff because those are too, mm-hmm. too freaking, you know, too freaking out there and, and raunchy. Yeah, I've uh, I've only met uh, Johnny, who was uh, Adam. I called him Johnny like we was on first name basis. He does not know who the fuck I am. But yeah, I met him at a Comic Con here because a couple years ago was my first time going to a Comic Con. I ended up going by myself because all of my brothers was busy and everything, and I uh, met him there. And he was he was fucking awesome, like Johnny, bruh. So like after I met him, I was like, yo, one of my goals now is to go to these cons and like eventually try to meet all of the rangers like he was the first but i'm eventually gonna try to uh try to meet all of them because now i'm gonna have more vacations and stuff so i could try to travel to like new york comic cons and stuff like that but you know, yeah that, that's my goal I, ha- I still have not yet johnny young bosch and he's the one i really really want to meet because he was my favorite ranger you know what i'm saying growing Listen. up he became my favorite ranger. I mean, I have multiple favorites, but that guy is like one of my top tier, like even more than JDF. And he's the voice of Vasha Stampede. So I have mad love for this guy mm-hmm. and I want to meet him. And I think he's probably the only one I haven't met. No, I haven't, I haven't met Rocky either. But yeah, I've been dying to meet Johnny Jan Bosch. It's just the, I think there was one chance and he came to uh, Anime Central, but I never got to meet him there. And I'm still like, hoping I get to meet him one day. Yeah, man, he he was awesome, man. We we took the picture together and everything. I talked to him a little bit about uh, Persona because he did the voice of uh, the main character in the anime and everything like that. So, yeah, he was real, real cool and everything, man, like laid back. He was, like, I don't know, maybe just movie magic. Like, they give him the Tom Cruise treatment, but he was shorter than I expected. I guess that was one of the things where it was like, oh, yeah, he was, look, I remember you was beating up the um the damn Ivan Ooze. What was the damn creature Ooh. names? The the original, not the bird ones, not the Tangle Warriors, but the the ugly motherfuckers. Oh, I, I don't like, know. I just remember his. I just remember him going like, "Meet my kids." That's, yeah. it. That's all I remember, his kids. <laughs> I don't remember they had a name or anything. It was just yeah, man. I was just <laughs> like thinking, it was like yeah, he was beating the shit out of them. It was like yeah, he's not really like all of that tall. I felt like a a giant over him, and I'm not even tall. So I was like, yeah, they definitely gave like some movie magic. But yeah, man, meeting him was awesome. Like, yeah. Yo, Walter, oh. Walter Jones is also short as shit, too. I have never met him. My mother told me that that was my cousin. I don't believe her. But <laughs> we, we will find out. <laughs> Eventually, one day, I'm going to meet him, and I'm going to ask, like, hey, do you know such and such and this grandmother? And the people like, yes. I'm like, I fucking knew it. <laughs> <laughs> that will be dope. that will be great. Yeah, look, I don't. Look, we're, we'll find out together one day, chat. But y'all got any other questions for for my guy before I let him go? I don't want to take up too much of his time. I know you got things to do. Did you ever get a chance to go see Uncharted today? I, no, I did not. We 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 went on a mission to uh, get some arts and crafts stuff because uh, my fiance wanted to take our Nerf guns and repaint them. Gotcha. That sounds like fucking mm-hmm. fun. Yeah. So we went we went on that kind of mission right there. Uh, I'm excited because I'm we're we we're going through this Nerf nerf craze right now because of me and we're also <laughs> we're also going through an, a, a lego craze because of her so both our crazes are taking over our freaking wallets gotcha look at well, us we're like grown-ass people and well look man, i'm definitely excited for you and everything because like i said uh i don't want to say knowing you for that, that long but knowing of you and everything and just like everything that's happened it's like, you know, seeing you happy and everything. I got a fiance and everything. Like, we talk about growing up, man. Like, it's like, I literally, like, grew up with you. So, it's, it's, it's good to see that, man. And like I said, without you, I, I wouldn't have met my girl either. So, I'm definitely thankful for that. I'm here to put smiles on people's faces. Smile, so people. Need. But, um, yeah. chat, y'all, y'all good? Oh, he finally tells what reference references is reference to the feeling of deep respect or awe. So the question is, when was your most recent overwhelming feeling of reverence? Uh, what was my most recent feeling of deep respect or awe? Like, 
to myself or to others? I'm still lost on the question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still lost on the question. I, I, don't, I don't know how to answer that. I mean, other than I'm in awe of everything that's, that MW has done since forever. I don't think there was like a time frame or a, a specific moment. Probably the biggest is when I did that documentary and I had um, people submit their videos of the first time watching the Juggernaut Bitch and how it impacted their lives and blah, blah, blah. And that was something I worked on for like a year, putting that stuff together and seeing all that, it's, it's, it just, I was in complete awe, you know, cause never in my life would I have thought like stuff that we did for fun or whatever was gonna be accepted so well by others and impacted their life and got them through. I'm telling you, like you said, it got you through stuff. It got people through so much stuff, you know? And I heard these stories and, and they always touch me. And sometimes that just keeps me going, you know? And I felt, I felt bad for those, those years that I didn't do much because I felt like I was letting people down. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to let nobody down and I don't want, I don't want anybody to feel like I'm not there for them because I want to be there for everybody. Hey man, like if anybody understands like this sentiment, like I said, uh, even with our nights of paradise with me and no tomatoes, like we recently had a conversation cause like I showed it on stream and a couple months ago and they was like, yo, you guys got to go do another one and everything. So we was talking about like rebooting and everything. But like you said, like he works, I work, I'm only off on weekends. Like, it's harder than, than certain people feel. And just like No Tomatoes, that's what I was getting to. Don't feel that way. You gave us more than enough. Like, man, the content and everything that you put out, man, you deserve, like, breaks and everything like that. And I completely understand the feeling of, you know, not being able to, like, provide, you know, the entertainment for people, especially when you know that you were helping them out. But, yeah, man, it's just, it, it's a tough, like, road to balance when it comes to that type of stuff. At least, at least, from my my perspective, any old way. My thank you, thank you. You know, I just I care, you know. So. And that's all. I mean, I I, I, I look out for me, yes, but I I do care, and I was like, hey man, let me put on let me put on these let me put on the show for these guys. So let me let me do this for for them because I know you guys will appreciate it, and it'll you know make your day much better and. Everybody needs uh, a great day. You know? well, your day's good. My day's great. Yeah, see? Look, and now, if y'all need direct access to my man, matter of fact, let me do this real quick. Now, y'all, not only do y'all get to in, in, you know, enjoy his uh, content, but you could talk to the man and interact with him live. Your ass don't care. <laughs> Gee. <laughs> Gee's don't hilarious. Tell him the secrets. Again, G, thank you for the voiceover. For y'all that was here during the beginning, she uh, did the voice work for me, and I'm very, very appreciative. Like, I was trying to get all of this stuff done before today, and like I said, my schedule was hectic in the day. I was supposed to get everything done. I had to go do shit this morning and took off like four hours away from me. It was just like, Jesus. So I hope y'all enjoyed and everything, the production of all of this. Um, this Naz, this look. Thank you, my guy, for even coming through and uh, giving us your time for, for everybody that came through oh, in the chat sure, and everything. Man. Thank you. I hope y'all enjoyed the show. This is only the beginning. I am very grateful and appreciative that my guy can be the first episode. Hopefully, something's going to go wrong, but I'm going to try to put this on YouTube afterwards <laughs> so everybody that couldn't make it could actually, you know, watch it. But chat already know no, my story. Really, Travis is here to, to fix my, my dumbass technical problems. That's an easy task. I mean, you could just export it from here and link up your YouTube and boom, it just goes there. Yeah, that's what I usually do. The problem was my fucking audio wasn't, it would just have the video and none of my audio would be there. And it was, it was a, a me problem. I fucked it up. But um, because I, I recently did this overlay, I don't know if I put all of the correct shit in there. So I'm hoping it recorded everything. And I didn't realize it till like halfway through, but I hope everything is good. Because if not, I'm going to be pissed. But, I mean, this isn't going to be the, the the last time I have you on. I'm pretty sure that, you know, 
some things are going to upgrade and I'm going to be talking to you more in the future and everything just to get up with y'all. Hell, maybe we might be able to, uh, if Scoob and Randy and everybody come over, we can do like a big group thing and have everybody talk, everybody do shit like that too. That'd be awesome. That'd be fantastic. I mean, these guys love doing anything, especially Scooby. Scooby loves the camera. Listen, that is that is a okay with me. Uh, but yeah, yeah, I'm. This was this was great. I I love the production. You did a good job, and all you guys who are here, I mean, you welcome me. Some of you guys I know, some I don't, and uh, I hope this is not the last time I see y'all. And our paths cross again. Uh, you're free to come to my stream as well. It's just a chill, kickback place. I just play games and watch wrestling and movies on there. And it's just, it's a hangout spot, you know? And uh, yeah, and I hope I could join up to your stream sometimes too. Like I, like you said, our, our schedules conflict each other. Yeah, man, it's, and especially, you know, with, I know there's a time difference and everything too. But um, where can the, the, the lovely people in chat find you? You want to give them your Twitter? And I'll, I'll put all of that stuff, uh, too, um, in the chat. But Yeah, my Twitter is simple. It's right there, Nastradomics. Uh, and I know it's probably, like, hard to uh, spell it out just for me saying it. But uh, Big Love's putting up the information right there. Is that uh, Twitter, Nasradamus, Twitch, Nasradamus. Um, my YouTube is Nas the Stampede, uh, spelled all out like T H E, the Stampede. And um, yeah, but the best bet is Twitter because I post everything there. And like uh, Glove said, I, I give you um, a window into my world. You know, I also have a TikTok. I mean, I don't do much over there, I kind of do stuff. But uh, it's the same Nash Domus. It's just Nash Domus all around. But, yeah, you can find me, follow me on Twitter, and and that'll keep you informed with everything I do. I've never died. That's the thing that people say, like, where you guys been, blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, I've never left. I, I'm still here, and I'm still streaming, and, and I try to let the people on YouTube know that, look, I'm still here, and if you, you, you keep up, then you'll get some surprises. Because Randy and the guys is like... It's like WrestleManias with The Undertaker, you know? They only come out when when it's the big thing, you know? It's the big, like, reward for sticking around. So you stick around, and you'll see, you eventually see the guys and have a great time. Yep, yeah, well, with that being said, thank you, my guy. Thank you, guys, chat. Um, I'm going to let my guy go because I know he got some uh, arts and crafts to do with the fiancé. And um, thank you all for being for the first, uh, you know, episode of... Uh, Glovers and friends, I hope y'all return for the next one. I hope y'all enjoyed the com content. And until yeah. then, return to the light, you feel me? Thank you, everybody.